there are major differences in their packaging and their brand as far as cars and computers go, right? As far as computers go, you got your Mac versus a PC. Some computers have different programs and applications than others. And most computers look different from one to the other. But if you open up a web browser on any one of them and type in DonovanSharp.com, not only are you going not only are you going to be shocked for better or worse, you're going to see all of the same things on the screen. Yes, computers are all very different from each other in many, many ways, but they all operate in the same way. Same with cars. Whether you're driving a basic model Toyota or a Lamborghini, the gas pedal is on the right, the brake pedal is on the left. The steering wheel is going to work the same way. And even though the engines are very, very different from one another, they have the same function, which is to propel the car forward and backwards. Yes, Lamborghinis have a lot more bells and whistles. Yes, the engine in a Lamborghini is very, very different from the engine in a Toyota Camry. And yes, Lambos cost a shitload more cash than Toyota. They are very, very different from one another, but they operate the same way. Gentlemen, cars and computers are very similar to people. People come in all different shapes, sizes, and colors. We all come from different backgrounds and cultures. We all speak different languages. But if we take a painkiller, the pain goes away. If we do a line of cocaine, we're going to get high and feel invincible. If we take poison, we're going to get sick or we're going to die. If we eat too much, we get fat. If we lift weights, we get stronger. The list goes on. How that ties in is that one of the most ubiquitous axioms of the red pill is that all women are like that. But people who, people who disagree don't seem to understand, or at least they pretend not to understand, that all women are like that doesn't mean that all women are the same. Like cars and computers, gentlemen, women come in all shapes, sizes, and colors. They're all very different in many ways from woman to woman, from female to female. The hardware and the packaging might look different, but their hard drives are all identical. They are motivated by the same things. They carry out those motivations in much the same ways. Their motivations manifest themselves the same way. So, what exactly is a Walt? What exactly does all women are like that mean? Well, I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna go Red Pill 101 here for you. Basically, all women are like that means that all women operate the same way. Like I said before, they're different on the outside, different environment but their software is identical, meaning that they're attracted to the same things, they're aroused by the same things, and they operate within sexual relationships and the sexual marketplace in the same ways. No, not exactly the same way down to the time, the day, and the behavior, right? But their motivations and actions are very much alike. We know this in the red pill community. We can accurately predict any given female's behavior. It may not happen at the exact time, in the exact place, in the exact way, but we know what the fuck women are trying to do. AWALT, again, doesn't mean all women are the same. That's just not true. It means, again, that women conduct themselves in relationships by the same set of rules or principles. In other words, they're motivated by the same things regardless of how different they are. Again, all women aren't the same. When people refute this, they're not saying, they're not refuting AWALT. They're not saying, well, not all women are like that. No, what they're really refuting is all women are the same. This is a very disingenuous way of arguing this point, guys. They're arguing against something else. They purposely misinterpret AWALT. Now, the most ubiquitous red pill axiom when it comes to AWALT or all women are like that is hypergamy. And like I said, I'm going to have Rolo Tomasi on here in about 15 minutes to discuss open hypergamy, but I'm going to dive into it a little bit before he comes on and give you again a little bit of Red Pill 101 and talk about the fact that all females exercise, that not all females exercise hypergamy in exactly the same ways. Again, all women are like that. All women are not the same, but they are all like that. They're all motivated by the same things through their actions and their objections, although they achieve them, you know, slightly differently. Let's talk about hypergamy. Now Rollo could give you a Rollo can write an entire book on hypergamy. I'm going to I'm going to boil this down to I'm going to go I'm I'm just going to boil this down to basically a simple definition. The definition of hypergamy is a female consolidating on the highest value male available to her. That's it. So for example, if a woman's boyfriend is homeless, broke, has no job, no car, ugly and in bad shape, and a guy who has a mansion who is rich and the CEO of a Fortune 500 company 
owns five sports cars, has underwear model looks, washboard abs, and shows interest in a relationship with her, she will leave her homeless boyfriend for the rich guy. Now, that is an extreme, that is an, that is an extreme example, but you get the point. If a higher value male comes along, females more likely than not are going to jump ship. Now, there are two kinds of hypergamy. There is genetic hypergamy and there is provider hypergamy. Alpha fucks hypergamy is a woman getting with and or cheating with a guy who is physically superior to her significant other. If her boyfriend is fat, if her boyfriend or husband is fat, not very good looking, weak jaw, he's short, he's balding, and a 6'4 Adonis with square with a square jaw wants to fuck her, she's going to let him fuck her. He has better genes, and women are more aroused by men with better genes. That's it. Provider hypergamy is women getting with a guy who is a better provider than her current significant other. And J-Pill, speaking of what is this guy talking about? This is not a religion. Yep, get the fuck out of here. See you later. J-Pill, you're gone. Don't come in here and talk shit about what's this guy talking about? Guess what? <laughs> now you can Now you can sit there and listen. I don't mind, you know, I don't mind, uh, you know, open discourse, but don't come in. Listen, if you want to complain about my podcast, do it to yourself. If you do it in the chat, you're fucking gone. Fuck you. You're out of here. Anyway, provider hypergamy is a female getting with a guy who is a better provider than her current significant other. This normally happens with single mothers when they reach their 30s. Provider hypergamy is normally out of necessity as opposed to visceral arousal like genetic hypergamy in either case in either case hypergamy is about value ugly fat girls can't exercise hypergamy as much as hot girls lower sexual market value girls don't have the quality of options that higher sexual market value girls do here's the thing guys and a, and a lot of you guys are going to disagree but here's the thing hypergamy is good for men y listen i don't give a shit it's good for men you want to know why? Because it forces us to keep our shit together. Conditional love, gentlemen, is for the weak. If you don't keep your shit together, your girl has the right to go out and find someone who does. Period. Same with you. If your girl gets fat, go dump her and go get a skinnier girl. Now, females have a hard time with this because they think that this is, quote, shallow, right? Look, they, you know, they say things like, looks and money and muscles aren't important to me. I want a man of substance. No, you don't. You want a high value guy and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Admitting that you're hypergamous as a female doesn't make you a bad person, ladies. It makes you a woman. Leaving your loser of a boyfriend or husband for a man who's got his shit together is no more wrong than a man leaving his fat wife for a woman who is more physically fit. That's the way it goes. All women are hypergamous, whether they admit it or not. They don't all exercise hypergamy in exactly the same ways and to the same degrees, but they are all looking to get with the highest value guy they can find. I remember a while back when I lived in Vegas, one stripper literally told me, she says, I don't want to, I don't want to, she says, I want to date, I don't want to date down. I don't want to marry down. I want to date up. I want to marry up. I want to fuck up. This is what she said to me. Women want a man who is superior to them in every way. Sexual market value, net worth, education, intelligence, the whole nine guys. If their boyfriend is of equal or lesser value to her in most of those areas, she's going to leave him eventually, guys. You can count on it. If, a, if her boyfriend of lesser value is of lesser value than a man showing interest in, in her, she is going to leave him for that man. This is how it goes, guys. Like they always say, the old saying goes, don't hate the player, man. Hate the game. <laughs> 